Well, Paul, thanks so much for coming in today. Oh, and yeah. um, I, I asked Paul to come in as we talk about the theme of freedom today in the book of Romans. Could you start off by just giving us a brief snapshot of, you know, the recent journey for you? Sure, yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, it started really back in September 2020 when I had the uh, results of a blood test for just a regular medical checkup thing. And my GP said, oh, that's um, not too good. The blood, blood results are not good on your prostate levels. So we better um, send you off to see a specialist and see what that's all about. So I said, oh, that's okay, that's early days, we'll see. So I went off to see the specialist and the specialist said, oh, that's not too good either. <laughs> um, you've definitely got a tumour there or, or something going on. We better send you off for an MRI and see you know, what, uh, what's going on. So another week or two went by and did the MRI and still thinking, oh, it's early days, could be, could be anything. And uh, then he, he calls us up and says, well, the MRI is definitely showing something pretty serious there. I better do a biopsy. Find it. And while we're doing a biopsy, I'll do this thing called a PET scan. So another set of tests, another few scans and this biopsy thing, which wasn't real good. Anyway, um, by the middle of November, um, we, Liz and I were sitting in the specialist rooms and he said, well, the, you definitely got prostate cancer and it's a very aggressive type of cancer. Uh, it's measured on this score out of 10 and my rating was 9 out of 10. So that was a bit of a shock to us. Uh, we were hoping that it was something fairly minor and insignificant. But um, he said, I, I suggest we operate as soon as we possibly can before Christmas. So this was middle of November. He can, I can fit you in just before Christmas. So um, that was a real surprise to us. And um, uh, obviously when we went home and talked about it, there was a few tears and a few... Um, you know, it's the beginning, beginning of a journey, which we weren't sure where it was going to end. So that's sort of how it started. And look, that story that you share would not be unfamiliar with mm. many people who are connecting with church today. Um, today, as I said, we're looking at the theme in Romans of freedom in Christ. And so, Paul, what comes to your mind when you're facing significant mm. health challenges? Mm. You hear this passage that says we are now made alive in Christ. Would you be able mm. to speak to that? Yeah, place? sure. Well... The amazing thing to us was that the very next day after we had that news, uh, we try and do a Thrive reading together each day and have a cup of tea in the morning and do a Thrive and a bit of a prayer time. And the, the scheduled reading, you know, wasn't made up, it just happened that way <laughs> <laughs> in God's timing. The very next uh, day, the reading was from Luke chapter 7 and it's the parable of the uh, centurion's servant and uh, how the centurion sends for Jesus and says, can you come and heal my servant, and the Jews say, look, this is a great guy, I think you should heal his mm. servant. And Jesus heads off and um, then the servant says words saying, no, you don't have to come to my house. That, you know, I'm not worthy for you to come into my house. Just say the word and, and that'll do, you know, he'll be healed. And Jesus said, that's amazing, you know. I, I haven't seen such faith in all of Israel. Mm. And it struck us, Liz and I, that um, even though the story is about healing and the, the servant does get healed, it's more about God is looking for faith, mm. for trust. And um, for us, that was a really strong message right at the right time to say, just trust me. Mm. I know what I'm doing. You're in my hands. Just mm. trust me. So it was the sort of freedom of knowing that we weren't on our own, mm. that God was with us. And to have that reading right on the, you know, the very next day yeah. was just so powerful for us, really. Yeah. yeah. And I've heard you speak. What strikes me is that, and, and if you could describe this briefly, like there's not the absence, of, like there is grief in your life. Mm. Like you've got a wife and kids mm. and grandkids that you love. Can you just touch on that and also where you've experienced freedom from God mm. in this journey? Sure, sure. Well, there's obviously the, the grief of if my life is cut short, Liz will be a widow, you know, my grandkids won't have a pa, my daughters won't have a dad. And so that, that's, a, you know, stress in anybody's life. And to think that your life is going to end prematurely, our lives will all end. But, you know, we're all hoping it'll be 30, 40, 50 years down the track, not, not maybe two or three. So um, knowing that God was with us in that journey um, just gave us the freedom to know that he's in control of everything. Mm -hmm. And whatever happens, you know, if I die prematurely, well, if God's got a plan for me, uh, he's got a plan for Liz and for the grandkids and he's in charge. Another little story just at that time was um, we had some friends down for the weekend uh, just immediately after that and uh, we were going to watch church online on Sunday morning and we, Liz and I said, we're going to watch One Hope and our friends Graham and Bev said, no, we want to watch an Elf's in The Melbourne. church yeah, battle. Yeah, church, the church, church battle. battle. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a little bit of a to and fro and we agreed that we'd watch um, something from London, yep. Holy Trinity Brompton, the, 
Um, these friends and us had been to the Alpha Conference that's run from HTB, so oh, let's watch HTB. That'll be a good online service for sure. Well, the, the message on that morning, which was two or three days after we got the news about the cancer, um, was from John chapter 14. And Jesus says, uh, I give you my peace, you know, not as the world gives peace, but I give you my peace. Mm. And uh, he said, let not your hearts be troubled, mm. neither be afraid. Mm. And I, well, I was just blown away. You know, there we are just a few days later and Jesus is saying, don't be afraid, you know, don't be troubled. I'll give you peace. And the most amazing thing for me is that, like I'm normally a, not a particularly peaceful person. I'm like the little duck, you know, on the pond that looks peaceful on the surface, but underneath there's a lot going on. Yeah. I've just felt total peace through this whole journey. And I've just had no anxiety about the future, no anxiety about an early death. All the tests, we've been in this now for more than a year and there's continual tests and scans and all that. But all the way through, I've just experienced God's peacefulness. We've, we've slept well, we haven't been worried. And it's just amazing to me. I think that's really a gift hmm. from God, you know. Um, so the new life in Christ comes with a whole lot of gifts <laughs> yep, yep. and I think the gift of joyfulness and peace and contentment, uh, you yeah, know, that's just been amazing to me. Yeah. And when we were speaking earlier, you had this incredible line where, you, like, would you speak to what the most important thing is, has been for you in this? I think along the journey, as I say, it's been a bit more than 12 months. I think I've learnt that um, the most important thing is not to be healed, maybe. Mm. Like, we'd all love to be healed and live a bit longer, but... At the end of the journey, we're going to die, whether it's, as I said, in a short term yeah. or long term. What I've learned is that um, a relationship with God is more important than healing, really. Yeah. So the physical healing, that'd be great, yeah. but that doesn't really matter. Um, so having a right relationship with God and having Jesus in my life mm -hmm. involved and walking with me through this journey, this pain, yeah. then that's more important to me, yeah. I've realised. Yeah. I mean, that, that is so incredible. That's what struck me even in the way that you talk and your demeanour, the way that Paul carries himself, that, that sense of freedom mm. and peace. And, you know, maybe there'd be some people connecting with church today and they would say, well, that's, that's good for Paul, mm. but I can't, like, that is just not where I'm at. Mm. Um, what would your encouragement be to people who are, who are maybe it's not physical, maybe mm. it's just drawn to those feelings mm. right now of fear or mm. anxiety or mm. unsettledness? or just simply who face challenge, what would their enc your encouragement for them be? Put simply that God is there, God is with us all the way through the journey. I think I, I told people early on that I felt that God was very close in this journey, like, like I mentioned those passages, those words that came just at the right time. But on reflection, I think God has always been close. He's always been in my life. But being one who likes to control his life as much as possible, <laughs> I sort of... You push, must be push the God only the one, Paul, you're the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I think we tend to sort of push God aside. Yep. We don't really need God. We're, you know, life's going okay. We've got a job, we've got a nice house, we've got a family that's functioning okay. You know, mm. we don't really need God. But when you get to the end of the line, end of the tether, and there's nowhere else to turn, God is right there. And I think I've realised that God was there and is there all the way through. So for people who are not sure, God is there. Yeah. He's with us. And all we have to do is just look at him and ask him and he'll be there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I want to say thanks for so much for coming in today, Paul, mm. and sharing your story. And hope it's mm. been, a, I believe it'll be an encouragement to people. Yeah. And it's just, um, that's the power of the body, isn't it? Mm. Like we look around and we see the demonstration of faith. And when yep. we look hard enough, we can see the demonstration of God's freedom yep. and God's grace. So I want to yep. say thanks Good. for coming in today, Paul. It's a pleasure, Jonah.